Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can check for existing trademarks before creating your KDP books so you don't have to worry about infringing. But before we dive into the process of checking for trademarks, let me give you a quick idea of what trademarks are. So trademarks are legally registered symbols, logos, or words. We're gonna be talking about words in this case that represent a brand or company. By using trademarks in your log content books, you risk infringing on someone else's trademark, which could result in legal issues. But when going through KDP, what would most likely happen is your book would get suspended and your account would also get suspended, both of which can be recovered from, but obviously it's not fun. I once created a YouTube channel planner, as many of you likely know, and it became one of my best-selling books. However, I was using the term YouTube, which is very obviously trademarked, but as someone who tends to get excited about creating something rather than worrying about whether or not I'm following the rules, I just went for it anyway. I promise I'm not quite like that now. I had my fun and then I learned my lesson the hard way and you can rest assured that I won't ever be making that mistake again. I had kind of rationalized it away because I saw plenty of other YouTube channel planners already out on Amazon so I figured that since they were fine I would be too, right? Wrong, wrong, very wrong. Amazon came for the majority of them including mine which led to a whole suspension debacle that got resolved in surprisingly just a few hours with minimal if any lasting repercussions so I absolutely learned what you can't get away with even if it seems like everyone else is doing it too. When it comes to trademarks there is no messing around you guys. So don't go looking for loopholes like I did. Infringing on a trademark is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make and Amazon doesn't take it lightly, which is why it's so important that you are very careful you're not accidentally infringing. In some cases, it's obvious. I'm sure all of you know by now that you can't stick Harry Potter or Moana on one of your books. That'd be a big no-no, but what about in much less obvious cases? For example, did you know that the term bullet journal is actually trademarked? I know many of you do, but some of you don't. There are lots of trademark terms out there. And though I personally think Amazon isn't able to keep up with all of them, so it can be a lot safer than using YouTube, for example, like I did. All it really takes is for the person who owns a trademark to hunt down every last book that's infringing, present the info to Amazon, and get a lot of books and accounts suspended. So honestly, when it comes to trademarks, you can never be too careful. The reason why I decided to create this video is because I recently received a comment from someone on my channel who was getting really stressed out about trademarks. And I know that yes, it can be stressful, but it really shouldn't be that stressful. They were talking about how the term gratitude is trademarked and how fashion is trademarked. So if every term is trademarked, how on earth are you supposed to create any book ever that isn't accidentally infringing. Thankfully, there is a slight error in that logic, and I'm going to be showing you in just a bit that trademarks really aren't as limiting and complex as you might think. But more than anything, I really just want you guys to have fun with creating books and not go so hung up on all the rules and legal side of things. And of course, it's incredibly important that you know how to handle things like that, but if they're holding you back from creating something you truly love to create, just because you're afraid of accidentally breaking one of the guidelines, please don't do that to yourself. Don't live in fear over your KDP account getting suspended, familiarize yourself with the rules, know how to follow them, and then don't worry about it again. That's all I ask. It's not worth tearing your hair out over, trust me. And even if something does happen, like it happened to me, there's almost always a resolution. Even an account termination can be fixed, which isn't to say it always can be, but it can in many instances. So please, more than anything, just have fun creating. That being said, it is so important that you make sure you're not infringing on any trademarks. So let's get into talking about how you can check for any possible trademarks before creating a KDP book. You are going to do this with the help of a trademark database. However, there are multiple trademark databases. There's a United States one, a Europe one, a Korea one, even a Singapore one, and countless others. You could, of course, go through like 10 of them if that made you feel more comfortable, but I suggest sticking with those in your target market. It's a little tricky just because Amazon delivers internationally, so it's important that you're not infringing on any trademarks registered in any countries, but it's most important for the country or region where your target market is located located and you receive the most sales. For example, for me, I primarily look at the United States trademark database, but I'll also sometimes take a peek at the Europe one as well. I'd say at least 95% of my sales come from the United States, but I will have the occasional purchase from someone in Europe, so I check occasionally just to be sure. But before we get into that, I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing learning community with a variety of classes geared toward every age and skill level, with class topics ranging anywhere from building passive income to growing 
growing a brand. I joined Skillshare because I have such a deep passion for continually learning and bettering myself, both within my personal life and my professional life. And that's what Skillshare is all about. Skillshare allows you to take control of your path, even your career path, so you can learn about the things that interest you and develop your skills into something that can take you where you want to go, whether that's your own business or landing the perfect job that aligns with your skill set. With Skillshare, no goal is too small, so you can start wherever you're at and keep advancing at your own pace. As I mentioned, I'm always trying to improve myself. One of my favorite areas that I'm continually working on is productivity. With that in mind, I took the class Productivity Today, Finding Your Flow for Maximal Productivity by Kevin Siskar, and it taught me a lot about how I can build an environment that cultivates flow, which is a state of being so completely immersed in the moment that all you're focused on is doing. For myself, I learned that to be able to enter into states of flow more regularly, I need to remove my phone from the area. Texts, emails, messages, and the like easily distract me, and even if I turn on Do Not Disturb, I'm still prompted to check my phone every few minutes. So I've decided to leave my phone in a separate room before I start doing work, and it has helped immensely to improve my subconscious state and clear my mind so that my environment is more prepared for me to enter into a state of flow. This one class has provided me with a new strategy that's an absolute game changer for me, and that's only one of many classes that can have a significant impact on your life. So what are you waiting for? The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your interests today. So make sure to go and check that out. All right, now let's get back to what you came for. All right, so the first step is going to be to head to the trademark database. If you just type in United States trademark database, it should be the first thing that pops up. You want this USPTO. You can also search for the entire link. That's going to be USPTO.gov slash trademarks slash search. And then to access the trademark database, you're going to click on this search our trademark database button. And then after doing that, you're going to be presented with a few different options. Let me make it easy for you. Just come up to basic word mark search. All right, all of this you're going to keep as is, plural and singular, live and dead, just so we can see everything. We are going to type in our search term. We are going to use gratitude journal as our example for this one. We want to keep that and we're going to change it to exact search phrase so that we get as many close matches as possible. And now once you're ready to check for trademarks for this term, just click submit query. All right, we have got a bunch of information that is important to look at. So we've got a few different word marks here. Five minute gratitude journal, avoid that one. Insightful gratitude journal, that one's dead. Give me five gratitude journal, another one to avoid. This one appears to be one that's in Spanish. And then we've got some other gratitude journals, all of which are dead. So yeah, we've got a lot of info here and it's kind of hard to figure out what is important to look at. And there are a few different things that are important to look at. Let's take a peek really quick at this five minute gratitude journal. All right, so the word mark for this one is is a five minute gratitude journal. So we can't use the term five minute gratitude journal. It's also live. So we extra can't use it. If it were dead, we might be able to, but that's something you might wanna look into a little bit more. And then the last thing to look at is goods and services up here. A trademark could be registered under a bunch of different classes. I'm not gonna go through each one, but the one that you are looking for is IC016. This 16 here, this is referring to printed goods, paper goods. So here we're talking about blank journal books, drawing pads, writing pads, paper notebooks. Any printed good cannot be associated with those. So we know that this is 100% one to avoid. And now we've got some other ones. Sometimes it tells you the classes here and sometimes it doesn't. Here looking at these classes, again, the only one we're looking for is this 016. But these ones here are all dead. So we'd wanna look a little bit more into it. We're gonna go ahead and click on this one because this is the exact term that I was searching for and it's the 016 one which is the most relevant as well. So as for it being dead, it looks like this term was abandoned. I would like to specify really quick that I don't know all the legal stuff. If you want all the facts, you might be better talking to a professional. Definitely don't ask me super specific questions because I can't necessarily give them to you. I go off of my best judgment a lot of the time. And with 
KDP, I feel like it's less important to be super careful, but still important. I don't know, there's kind of a gray area there, especially because it's just this globalized marketplace with tons and tons of books. It's a very specific situation. So overall, just be careful, whatever you're most comfortable with. This one is abandoned, so we could probably use it, but you might wanna do some more of your research before deciding on whether or not you're comfortable with it. But just one thing I wanna know, you know, like I don't like necessarily always using the examples of what's already on Amazon as to like whether or not you can do something. But here we've got gratitude journal, over 10,000 of them that could be technically infringing and they are just fine. That's the one thing I want to note. Sometimes you can look at Amazon and see if there are any books using the term that you want that have been around for a long time and that can make you more comfortable, but don't use it as your be all end all answer, excuse, whatever you want to call it. But it is something to consider. Some people don't always look at trademarks. A lot of people do. Either way though, these gratitude journals do seem to be fine right now. Just something I wanted to point out, take it as you will. All right, that is basically to the extent of how you can use the United States trademark database here to hunt down trademarks, see if you're accidentally infringing on any or about to accidentally infringe on any. There are a couple other databases you can use. I'm not going to specifically show you all of them. We've got the Canada one here, for example. This is the ic.gc.ca and then a bunch of other stuff and that brings us to the Canadian Trademarks database. That one might also be interesting to look at. We also have over here Trademarkia. This one searches tons and tons of trademarks. It looks like it focuses though on United States, Canada, European Union, and United Kingdom. I saw something super fascinating as I was preparing for this video. So there's this other one called TM View that seems to support even more offices. So it's got all of these across the European Union and beyond. So it seems to be even more comprehensive than trademark yo, which is also a good one to look at. But if you want the full picture, you can come to TMView. This is tmdn.org slash TMView. So I'm gonna look up Gratitude Journal one more time and I wanna show you what I saw. All right, so to me, this is fascinating. We're seeing a lot of Gratitude Journal, like this is the same one that was over on the United States trademark database that was under 016 Goods and Services, but that has ended. We've also got one in Canada here that was also 16 ended. And then our other that were in the United States. This one as well. This one here expired. This one was in Australia, another 16 one. I'm not sure the difference is between ended and expired. Again, still not a professional. I just have a basic idea of how to avoid infringing on trademarks and hopefully this is helping. And then our last one that I think is super fascinating to me, we've got gratitude journal that is still registered 16 in China. I'm gonna take a peek and here's what we've got. So this is super interesting to me. So essentially, if you wanted to be insanely, insanely careful, you would never use the term gratitude journal on KDP because again, Amazon is just a globalized marketplace and it's complicated because they deliver everywhere. Like you can't necessarily say, okay, I want this book to go to be available to all customers to purchase except for China. Unfortunately, you just can't do that. It could be purchased from someone in China. It's an option. It could be delivered to them. So if a term that you want is trademarked somewhere else, even if they're not your target market, they could still purchase the book so it's just how there's just such a gray area there and it really does make things complicated. However, I will say though, Gratitude Journal, it's a very saturated niche. There are already lots of people who are competing within this niche. So I personally wouldn't even recommend that you do a Gratitude Journal. So you might have a harder time with some of those more high competition niches, like bullet journals as well, for example, just kind of that everyone knows, everyone goes after because those are more likely to be trademarked as opposed to, for example, horse racing logbook. The odds of that being trademarked are so much slimmer, so it's something you much less have to worry about. So using the term gratitude journal might not be the best example. It's the one I chose though, so you could see the most results. Just this is the kind of thing that you could find when searching for trademarks. And it's ultimately up to you how you want to handle the situation. If you still want to use the term gratitude journal, even if it is trademarked in China, it's up to you. I'm not going to provide you with any legal advice. Basically, of all the databases I showed you, I think I'd recommend 
TM view the most just because it shows you all these offices. Focus the most on what you see in the United States. And then if there are other countries, take those into consideration as well. Remember, if a trademark is live, if it is registered under class IC016, and if it is using the term that you're looking for, then that means that that is a term that you cannot use. And if it's dead, you might be able to use it. If it's in a different office, up to you depending on whether or not you want to use it, whether or not you feel comfortable using it. I'm not a professional. I see it as a gray area. It is up to you. Focus the most on this United States trademark database and then head over to TMV if you want something just a little bit more comprehensive. And hopefully this made it easy for you. All right, everyone, thanks so, so much for watching this video. I really hope that it helped ease your mind about the world of trademarks so that you don't accidentally infringe. I don't know about you, but I personally get really intimidated by a lot of legal stuff and having a bunch of rules to follow to the point that I often find it difficult to learn everything. I've kind of barreled over stuff like this in the past and chosen to just learn the rules as they come. And while that strategy may have sufficed for me for like a good second, I'm getting a much more thorough understanding of all the different rules. And thankfully, many of them aren't too difficult to follow. Even avoiding trademark infringement, which would be so, so easy if we each had like a fancy little Chrome extension that would just go through and flag any trademark infringements within our content. But alas, it's not quite that simple. Maybe that already exists, like who knows? But even so, I hope that this video has helped you become more comfortable with using trademark databases so that you can check for any trademark on your own and know definitively whether or not you can use it, allowing you to publish all your KDP books with confidence. And just a quick reminder, I am in the process of working on a course that will be launching in just a few weeks, which will be taking your sales from zero to your first 10 and then on to 100 and more. And in the meantime, I've got a whole KDP bundle with a ton of covers and interiors, most of them editable inside Canva, which you can download for absolute free at the link below. Just type in your email address and they'll be delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also be among the first to know when my course goes live so you can secure the best deal possible. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. I would super duper appreciate it and I would love to have you. All right guys, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye.